The views and opinions expressed on the following program are those of the host and guests and do not necessarily reflect the policy or position of Owen TV's management, staff, or board of directors. Hello, my name is Corey Scott, and this is Political News and Political Views. No cue cards, no teleprompters, no idiot boards, just plain old two individuals talking about politics and the current state of politics in the United States today. Um, to my left, I have Mr. Dave Lillis here, and we are going to, I guess, focus on today the insurrection of January 6th. And before we get started on that, uh, Dave, I want to ask you a question. Mm -hmm. What is your background? What what qualifies you to discuss this, uh, this insurrection? Well, I've, I've run for office. I've run for office nine times. Um, I was successful as hell. I lost every one of them. <laughs> the purpose when I ran was, uh, with my training, it came up, you be what you want to be. You can lie, cheat, and steal to get in, but you have to lie, cheat, and steal to stay in. I wanted to do it the right way, and that's exactly what I did. I, I, the first election, I did take some money, very little, but I did take some. Um, I did not have to uh, bullshit anyone to get it. Mm -hmm. But the man who taught me, Stan Stopsinski, uh, Billy Rogel, um, Ronald Reagan. Mm -hmm. I got the chance to talk with Ronald Reagan. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was, you're there to serve the people. Mm -hmm. But what we have today is far from that. Okay. Some of the people I lost to sold their constituency out. I mean, my first election, uh, first two elections, um, the man didn't even live in his district. He rented an apartment in there sent himself some mail because his secretary told me. He sent it registered, so he sat there for a day, signed for it, and that was his proof that he lived there. Now, he did pay the rent there. Mm -hmm. So on the technicality, yeah, he had a residence. Okay. Um, the, one, the, the man that I ran against here in Lake Orion, he sold out this constituency. Got himself a nice, cushy job. He wanted to be move up to uh, state senator. But he got a job with the Liquor Control Commission, <laughs> which paid more, and he basically wrote legislation that benefited the Republican Party and benefited um, different businesses and sold us out. I couldn't bring myself to doing that. Now, um, did I like losing? Oh, hell no. Hell no. But I always did call and congratulate the people I ran against. Okay. And believe me, that's not as easy as it looks. Let me ask you a question. I, I think we both, we've had a conversation before when you spoke of not wanting to um, take donations and things of that nature. Because mm -hmm. you, I, I guess the way you put it is that you um, you don't want to have to, I guess, like owe anybody any, you know, any type of favors to, to. Well, some were bold enough to tell you you owe mm -hmm. them. Okay. Now, let me ask you this question. I don't know how the audience will feel about this, but. In, in, in my mind, I, I had this thought of, okay, take the donations, you know, do whatever, because uh, you really want to make a difference. So what about taking those, taking those donations, put, setting yourself up in office, and changing things from the inside out? That was brought up to me. Mm -hmm. It don't work like that. Mm -hmm. Mm -mm. No. Um, Michigan Restaurant Association. I'm a chef by trade. So I thought I got their endorsement. I, I knew I got that one. Mm -hmm. I couldn't count on the others. Mm -hmm. I gave honest answers, but I could not count on that one. Mm -hmm. And uh, I asked some questions about some issues that I didn't quite understand what they were looking for. Mm -hmm. So they explained to me, and I just, I don't know why I said it, but I did. I said, well, tell me something. If I just say yes to all of this, um, I get the endorsement. Oh, yeah. What if I don't do it? We know what to do. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. Did, did so they, did they uh, explain. N further? No, the florist got the endorsement, but uh, 
what happened was that, yes, they do know how to get you out of office. Mm -hmm. And it can get nasty. Now, that was back then. Mm -hmm. Now, it's worse. Mm -hmm. What's happened to politicians now, which is really sad, is, and, and I know I keep going to Trump, uh, because he lowered the bar lower than a snake's belly. I mean, he's, he's, he's just a floor above the devil. Wow. The thing is, he lied. He, he was nasty. You have a responsibility. You are a public servant. I don't care what position you have. But you are a public servant. The mayor, the governor, the president. You have to represent all. Even as a state rep, a state senator, or congressman, or U.S. senator, you represent all. But that's not how it is. Mm -hmm. Now you represent those that give you money. You really don't give your constituency the time of day. Well, let me ask you this question. Who would you put the blame on, honestly? Because when I look at the situation, um, I, see, I see it where... You said work for the people, but what what are what are the people actually doing? Are they demanding the the government work for? Okay. You, you, so I, I guess my point is we we're only we're the president is a, or any official any government official to me is going to do anything that the people allow them to do. So in a in, I guess in, in a sense I'm saying that Trump is only doing what we as the people allow him to do. We don't demand. Well, uh, we, we did demand, and he went further. I mean, um, it, I don't know if you've ever heard the name Walter Schaub. Walter Schaub was uh, in charge of ethics, morals, and things in Washington. Mm -hmm. And if you did something wrong, he got a report and you answered to him. Mm -hmm. He quit after six weeks with Trump. Mm -hmm. Trump just did whatever he damn well pleased. Mm -hmm. And the thing is, for me, the way I saw it, and this is me, I believe there are some people out there who believe the same way. Your job is to cast the ballot. You are to be up there. You are to negotiate for your district, your state, whatever. And you take the information, you make it applicable to your area. Now. Politicians now do that when they don't want to answer a question. Mm -hmm. Are you in my district? No. Well, then I don't have to talk to you. Well, those in the district, they don't answer to them either mm -hmm. because they don't come around. Mm -hmm. A lot of them now have uh, special details for protection. Were you aware of that? No, I was not. But yeah, after uh, January 6th, many of them have protection for their families and protection for themselves walking from their car to uh, the Senate building. Um, Fauci had to get protection because of the things that Trump said. But getting back to the, the district. So I say you lived in this district. I would come to you and say, okay, we have this bill here for school funding. If it passes, this and this and this will happen. If it doesn't pass, this and this and this will happen. This is how it affects our area. You get one vote. Now, the problem is, we kind of look at that vote, it belongs to, well, if I'm a Democrat, it's a Democrat vote. If I'm a Republican, it's a Republican vote. No, it isn't. It's a district vote. And that's where we lost the connection. That vote belongs to this district. Now, say we in this district like it. And all the districts around us don't. Okay? We cast our ballot. That's our... That's our speech. Mm -hmm. My job is to bring you accurate, honest information. Do you ever hear accurate, honest information today? You know, they say it's Pinocchio's. <laughs> I can't even tell you how long. <laughs> Trump, Trump could check the depth of the ocean with his. <laughs> yeah, uh, today I, I, don't, I don't know what's, what's, what's truth and what's not anymore. Uh, to no, they don't even it. try. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I had uh, trouble, you know, because, and, and the very amazing thing was, there was one house in Lake Orion, and I went and I talked to the people. I talked to them for about 15, 20 minutes, and we had a great conversation. Mm -hmm. And we saw eye to eye on everything. Mm -hmm. 
And I gave him my card. But I didn't put Democrat or Republican on it. I just put my name on it mm -hmm. for state rep. That was it. Mm -hmm. Because even though I was running under the Democratic ticket, you represent everybody. Mm -hmm. So that's how I ran. So basically in your eyes that... By the way, he, he took the card, threw it back in my face, and slammed the door. Oh, why is that? Because I'm a Democrat. So no matter if you, if you said you guys agreed on everything. <laughs> everything, it was everything, amazing. But the fact that you're yeah. a Democrat. Yeah, that one word. 20 minutes of my <laughs> life just <laughs> went down the toilet for one word. And basically, in previous shows we've talked about this. If you, we have terms that we use. Mm -hmm. Democrat, Republican. Well, what exactly does that mean? Because each one had an ide ideology at one time. Mm -hmm. But they always change. Everything changes constantly. That same Democrat, Republican that was there in uh, uh, 1770, well, they weren't there in 1776. Uh, let's go 1865 because the Republican Party had just started mm -hmm. around that time. And um, each one had an ideology that they followed. Mm -hmm. But you have to remember that ideology was at the time it existed. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Because what happened then and what has happened now, you couldn't do it. Right. And it, uh, 20 years from now, that ideology will change again. Why? Because a different generation of people, different ideas, different economics, different uh, uh, culture. There's so many factors that change the ideology. Mm -hmm. Now, then you have the left and the right. But I don't have a clear definition of what that is. Mm -hmm. The left means what? Yeah. Yeah, I agree. I'm, I'm the same way. Okay, but, but you hear it every day. Yeah, yes. The yeah. left. The left what? Now, well, the only thing I can come up with is, um, I guess, whichever hand you wipe your ass with. The what? left or the right. <laughs> That's all I see. Why, it. why, do, you, why do you think the, that the, the, the political party is more important than, as you stated, when Money. you're talking to this gentleman? Money. Oh, no, no, not just not just from just from constituents from a constituent uh, uh, oh. level. Like you said that you and this gentleman or this individual agreed on everything. Yeah. But as soon as you said that you were a Democrat, that why is it the party more important than someone who's willing to actually who's going to tell you the truth, work for the people, and and, and honestly do the right you know who, who's looking to do the right thing for the people. Well, I think when you you take the party, you take it as a whole. Mm -hmm. Sight unseen. Mm -hmm. If you and I were to sit here and you brought up different issues, um, we would agree on some, we'd disagree on some, and, and some we would kind of mesh together. But with the party, there is no discussion. The party says this, and that's it. Mm -hmm. Well, the thing is, as I've said, I, and I said this when I was, I was campaigning. Whatever these assholes do, you got to live with it and you got to pay for it. So whatever they do, they go and start a war. It might be your kid that has to go. Mm -hmm. So um, the, the left and the right. Now, there, there are two issues, and these are the two biggies. Gun control, which is... Nobody can logically pinpoint gun control because they won't allow it to happen. Mm -hmm. There's too much money involved. Mm -hmm. Some of the stuff that they say is so bizarre and so ridiculous, mm -hmm. but people buy it. Yet we complain about all the shootings in the street. Mm -hmm. Well, now wait a minute, you can't have it both ways. Now, the other one is abortion. These two issues, in theory, in theory, could pass one way or the other. Mm -hmm. You could, uh, and, and they may just do that. You could take the Supreme Court, and Mississippi has done that, go to the Supreme Court, which they're in now, and Roe v. Wade, they want overturned. 
Okay. But let's say they get it. How many people are going to buy into it? Will we go back to sticking your head in the oven? A coat hanger? Somebody punching you in the belly? Drink a chemical that will uh, kill the baby? Now, who does that go for? And, and what I heard with this, and I, this really, I hadn't thought about it, but it is true because when Margaret Sanger had brought this up, rich women, rich white women, mm -hmm. and the elite could get abortions. They could get condoms, they could get birth control. Mm -hmm. No problem, because we didn't talk about it. But those on the other side, black, Hispanic, poor white trash, they couldn't, mm -hmm. and they were the ones that were targeted. Mm -hmm. So even with the whole issue, it, <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, we'll, we'll look the other way here, but Not the, yeah. 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 So, but it, getting back to what I was saying about would they buy into it? Um, no, they wouldn't. And the same thing with gun control. If they passed a law saying everybody can have a gun, mm -hmm. well, not everyone's going to buy into it. Those are two that I don't think you could ever um, satisfy. Mm -hmm. And yet they, they can't even sit down and talk about it. Because the extremes, now if you say the extremist left and extremist right, now we can put a little bit of context to it. Mm -hmm. Extremist right is conservative. You will sit this way and you will wear your hat and tie and you will only go to the bathroom once a week. And we don't talk about it. On the left, oh yeah, just go out behind the building. So... My point is, and, and some of the words that come out, um, socialist, mm -hmm. they cannot even judge, justify the meaning of this. Mm -hmm. A socialist is a leftist, someone on the left, when in fact a socialist is an autocrat, a dictator. Mm -hmm. You have to put it over here and it's a bad word over here, but let's take it from here and say they're the socialist. They're the bad guys. That's what you got to have, a bad guy. So what, 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 is, what is the reasoning for calling the left this socialist? What you have to have the, an enemy. Okay. You have an enemy. See, they, I, I'm going to protect you. If you ever listen to them, mm -hmm. we need to fight them, whether it's Democrats fighting the right or Republicans fighting the left. I will protect you. I will fight for you. Well, now, wait a minute. If you get elected, does that mean that, well, maybe what we should do is I'm, we all wear badges, I'm represented, and the others are not. Because in a way, isn't that what they're saying? If you represent the entire district, and you say, I'm going to fight the people who are Democrats or I'm going to fight the Republicans. What are you saying in your district? Think about it. Are you saying that Democrats in my district, you better stay home and don't come outside? We don't want to look at you. That doesn't make sense. If you say, we are going to represent our district in Lansing, in... in um, in Detroit City Council, in Washington. We're going to represent our district. In our district, this is how we live, and this is what we like. Mm -hmm. And these are the problems that we have. Then you're doing something. But otherwise, all you're doing is creating an enemy. Now, you're familiar with Joe McCarthy. Yeah. Joe McCarthy was in West Virginia. He was in another election, and he was an alcoholic. He was, he was a bum. He was from Wisconsin. I wonder if he's related to Ron Johnson because Ron Johnson's an idiot. I mean, it, it, they need to open the mental institutions again because so he has a place to go because otherwise he's in Washington. I don't know if there's a connection there or not. There could be. Anyway, Joe McCarthy needed something to get his name out. He waved some papers 
and stated, I have 15 names of communists in the State Department. You know what the amazing part was? Those papers were blank. There wasn't anything on them. He made it up. And then he turned around and the number kept increasing and increasing. And he caused a scare. The Red Scare in this country was so bad that people didn't talk to one another. People were turning each other in. And one idiot got that to happen. And people bought into it. And they didn't bother to talk to one another. And that's exactly what we're going through now. Now, the reason there's a connection there is because his second was a guy named Roy Cohn. Roy Cohn was a lawyer who was, <laughs> well, Giuliani would need to go to school to learn to be this bad. But Donald Trump learned under him, mm -hmm. and he created chaos. He taught uh, McCarthy, accused the accuser. So when they had their, their uh, uh, hearings, he would accuse the people of being a communist. And I have not, and I have never read a communist magazine. I am not part of the Communist Party. Well, it didn't matter. He accused them. And that's all it took. Accuse the accuser. So what happened? Trump learned from Roy Cohn. Roy Cohn was disbarred twice, and he, he was worse than terrible. Um, but Trump learned how to do that. Also, find your enemy. So who was the enemy under Joe McCarthy? The communist. Were there communists in the uh, State Department? Maybe. But there's no, never been any proof. There. No, but if you, if I knew that you were reading a magazine that had communist sympathies in it, mm -hmm. I would turn you in and you would be under the gun. You could lose your job because someone accused you of it. And look what it did to us until finally Joseph Welch sat there and they accused someone who clearly was not a communist, but uh, Joe McCarthy was going after him and finally he said, Mr. McCarthy, have you no decency? And that's what needs to be said to Trump. Because he has created something. He has created a hate. He has created chaos. Why, why do you think, <laughs> uh, I, I've talked to individuals who support Trump, and according to, you know, according to individuals, or you know, just in social media, uh, when these findings come about, you know, about Trump, you know, in his, uh, how can I put it, uh, his misinformation, so to speak, they still defend him. Why yeah. do you think, what is it, is... Okay, some of the things that I've noticed with Trump, uh, Trump's father was clearly a racist. He was part of the KKK. Mm -hmm. They have pictures of him with his cloth. You no, know, they've been trying to hide that. Um, Trump got his way he was, had a company that if he told someone, if I told you, it's snowing outside, wouldn't you kind of look at me funny? Yeah. But see, his people didn't do that. Oh my God, I better get my coat on. He was always right. He took credit for everything that went right and blamed someone for everything that went wrong. That was how he came up. He did it with his family because his family has verified that. He did it in his businesses. He failed so many times. There was one time that uh, his casino, he decided he could run it better than the guy who was running it. Mm -hmm. And he ran it straight into the ground. Now that wasn't the first time. He had done that many times before, but he always had someone to blame. And he always sued everyone because that was the thing that he learned from Roy Cohn. Sue him, sue him. And he learned to be dishonest. Now, when I came up and I went to school, and hopefully when you went to school, the president was someone you could look up to. He, he could be your hero. Mm -hmm. Even if he wasn't, of course, most kids don't really go for a party. Mm -hmm. So, can you do that now? What's that? 
look at the president as a hero? Well, some 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 may. I mean, we we have the the individuals that, you know part of that insurrection. Um, they, I'm pretty sure that they view him that way. So I, I guess there's. <laughs> yeah. They're, they're, he's a hero. No. To, he's a hero to most. You know something? Yeah. He's more of a cult hero than mm -hmm. he is a hero of morals and ethics, mm -hmm. and and uh, somebody a hero is someone that that does good. Right. But who put who who put someone like that in check though? I mean, why is it? I mean, because you got to understand something. The president is what say the the most powerful position in the United States, right? In the United States. In the United yes. States. Yes. So it, it's according to most, a lot of people feel that, and I assume yourself, that he has caused nothing but but chaos. Mm -hmm. um, just the things that he says, you know, just I. I looked at something the other day about him talking about LeBron James, uh, if he wanted to, uh, misquote him, but basically change his gender. You know, it's, it's things mm -hmm. like that. You know, what does that have to do you with helping people? You don't expect that. I, I, no, I don't expect that from President. president. No. Okay, the thing. But, but it, who, who puts him in check? Who, this is, well. I, how can it, this be stopped? Well, I mean, he's no longer president, but let's just, if he uh, was still in that position, how could something like that I be stopped? I think the way he came up, and I blame politicians for this, mm -hmm. but the people have to take some responsibility themselves. Mm -hmm. They never held them accountable. Mm -hmm. They voted party. Mm -hmm. So, like when I ran here in Lake Orion, it didn't matter if I was a saint. The Republican won. Mm -hmm. You've heard the term gerrymandering? Mm -hmm. Well, they go through the uh, votes for um, in the, the primary. And they see how you voted because you have to declare. Mm -hmm. That's how they find out. So when they cut the borders, what it should be, a state rep, 85,000 people or 86,000, don't quote me on that, cut the square and then the 86,000 people that are in that square, regardless of what they are, that's a district. But that's not how they do it. They go through the map, they get your address, they see how you voted, not who you voted for, but how you voted. You voted Republican or Democrat. Mm -hmm. And then they take that, and that's how they cut the lines. We have a big chunk of Republicans here. We'll keep that here. And then we'll make a big chunk of, re of Democrats mm -hmm. and let them have one district while we have four. Mm -hmm. That's how they can get less votes and still win. And Democrats do it, too. Mm -hmm. It's not just the Republicans. Democrats do it, too. It should not even be done... It should be, with the technology we have now, it could be done by computer. There are formulas in which they can cut these districts because they're cut by population. You have so many people in a district. So you cut it by population, and whatever will be, will be. And then whoever in that district wants to run, pick your poison. You want to be Democrat, you want to be Republican. It doesn't matter, but it's within your district. Now, how does it change? It changes as people get older and the new generations move in and people come and go, come and go. Some are towns that stay that way forever. Others are uh, very transient. So what's here this four years may not be here this four years. But I think with Trump, he tapped into the fact that politicians did not listen to their constituency. Now, Trump did do that. He really didn't give a damn about them because all he needed was their vote and their money. But he listened and regurgitated back to them and then added their hate. He justified the hate, the fears. He justified the, oh, look what's happening. Now, he didn't say blacks were taking over. He didn't say Hispanics were taking over, but he implied it. He wouldn't say it directly. Now, he did say with Hispanics, when he came down the escalator, that he made his comments. Well, right there should have told people, oh, is that how you feel? You want to represent these, uh, you want to represent Hispanics, but yet they're drug dealers, rapists, murderers, and there may be a few good ones. So, let me see. Well, couldn't you say that about everybody? But he fed into that hate, and he, oh, he, he understands me. He listens to me. He justified their hate. That's why they can't even justify what he does, because it doesn't matter. 
Right. It gives me the okay to hate these people. It gives me the okay to give them the finger. So, I guess my, 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 I, well, he's, plan, as we all know, he's planning on running again. I, I'm going to give you a conspiracy. <laughs> What's that? You've noticed all these laws that have been changed? Mm -hmm. 18 states have changed laws. Now, an interesting one is Texas. Texas said, we haven't had any fraud in 10 years. None. Proud of that. But they're changing all these laws. They're, they're changing laws to stop something that hasn't happened. So break it, Does that break make it, sense? Break it down. Yeah, break it down. Okay. Uh, they're making it harder for certain people and certain areas so they can control how the voting goes by time, by the amount of people, by the difficulty, by the hours that they have. So they say they're not doing that, but that's exactly what they're doing. So, so what areas are, are they targeting? Okay, the, the poor, mm -hmm. uh, black uh, areas, mm -hmm. Hispanics, um, not the suburbs. The suburbs, they say, will probably still be no more than a half hour wait to vote, whereas areas in Houston could be up to six to eight hours. And remember, you cannot give them water or food. That is just asinine. But there's a couple other things there. They also put in, now they keep saying about, oh, we want people to vote, we want people to vote, but uh, we're going to cut the time and the number of days, and you can't get an absentee ballot, and you can't do this, you can't do that. But after the election, they also put in, if we don't like the results, we, the legislature, not the Secretary of State, not the inspectors, not the governor, the legislature can overturn it and change it, which means to put it in 2020 situation, Trump in Michigan, which he did try because he had the Speaker of the Senate and the Speaker of the House go to Washington, stay in his hotel, and meet him at the White House, and yes, they did agree to overturn the election. Yes, they did. But the border canvassers, one guy did not do it. Mm -hmm. And they kicked him out. He did the right thing. Mm -hmm. But what they're doing now is they are setting this up so that the legislatures can overturn the election. If that happens, Trump is, is testing this to see what happens in 2022. Why? to see which way the wind is blowing, okay? See if it works. Mm -hmm. Trump doesn't like to lose. Trump doesn't want to lose. Mm -hmm. If it do goes that way and they overturn an election, that means in 2024, he can run. And possibly win with um, everything without, in place. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Which means, why the hell does anybody need to vote? Now, the funny thing is, the majority of these legislatures are Republican. What if they were Democrat? Oh, wait a minute. No, wait a minute. Wait a minute. That, and that, that would be really funny. And this would be amazing to see. I, I, I would love to see this. This would, would be a hell of a reality show. If in an election in 2022, the legislature up here in Michigan becomes Democrat. And they say, oh, the laws they put in, hey, we're all for those. Now, what do you think you'd hear? You think be they'd backlash. be singing? There'll definitely be some backlash. Well, who, well, how can something like this go, how, how can something like this be put in place if this is so unfair? Why, why is it the people, why aren't the people making noise about this? Or why are they demanding any, any change? Some are. Some are, but the, the politicians don't listen. And I, I tell everybody out there, there are some apps on your phone for the Michigan legislature and the federal. 
get on your computer, find their number, find their offices, and call and call and call. And remember, they work for you. That is why they're there. They came to you and said, oh, if you vote for me, I will represent your ass. Until I'm in and then I don't give a shit about you. And that is exactly how it is. And that's not how it's supposed to be. And the money they're collecting, they have sold you down the river. All of them. And they're, they're still doing it. Trump has this, uh, this bullshit going on in Arizona. He started another super PAC, collect more money. Now, just so you all know, and it is a fact, Trump has his family. The reason his daughter-in-law is not going to run now is because she's in the election. So she's running the election. He can pay her whatever he wants. So he's funneling millions of dollars to his family. But this super PAC that he started, Save America, because I lost. Oh, oh no, it, it was stolen. It, it, they stole the election from him. He knew they stole it before the election happened. No, that's not, that's true. In April, he started, the only way we can lose this election is if it's rigged. Planting, planting that negative seed in an individual. Planted the yeah. seed. Yes. Accused the accuser. Now, the people can see this and yet refuse to believe it. Trump won. I know he won. Like that stupid woman in Michigan, and that this came up in the court hearing uh, with the judge a few uh, weeks ago, Judge Parker. That woman that signed that affidavit saying she saw bags of ballots going into, Co uh, well, Kobo or whatever they call mm -hmm. it, TCF now. Mm -hmm. um, I haven't been down there in a while. i got to go. Um, she saw the bags of ballots going in there for Biden. She saw them with her own eyes. She signed an affidavit. And they pulled the tape. Because everything's on camera. Mm -hmm. And guess what it was? What was that? WDIV bringing in the cameras. Really? And the lawyers... Uh, there was, there was uh, no other footage about any other, no bags or anything going into... It, she made it up. Mm -hmm. She wants to run in this district. She's, uh, well, I, from what I understand, she's got a post office box. She wants to run this district. She was sitting next to Rudy Giuliani when they were talking to the Michigan Senate. <laughs> Giuliani had gas and he was flirting all over the place and she was sitting there and she was playing her valley girl I signed an affidavit did you? well she got her 15 minutes of fame on Saturday Night Live <laughs> and she wants to run for state rep here please, please. It, it, you get what you vote for if you vote for people like this and, and one of the things that used to happen to me, the state rep that I ran against here, I can't mention his name, although I'd like to, and maybe I should, but I won't. But think back. You'll figure it out. He didn't have to run. This is an 80-20. He didn't give a shit about the people here. He didn't have to. He didn't have to go around and talk to him. It's an 80-20. When you say 80-20. 80% 80 80 Republican, 20% Democrat. Democrat. Okay. So he's, his votes were pretty much a, it was, done, it was deal, a done, done deal. deal. All he had to do was get through the primary, and it was a done deal. And I had to call and congratulate for something like that. Yeah. I had one election that was fair, and it was the greatest election. I, I, I felt... I was happy for the guy that beat me mm -hmm. and campaigned for him. Mm -hmm. Everything was fair. Everything was on that. We didn't agree on everything. Mm -hmm. Oh, we, we had some good disagreements. But it was fair. Mm -hmm. And that's how it's supposed to be. What you have to understand, and, and I, I say it again and again and again, these people have your lives in their, their hands. Trump had a lot of lives in his hands. And if you read the books and see the accounts of what had happened, there's a lot of people that died because he was more concerned with ratings. He was more concerned with 
what they fed him to read, it had to please him. And that was at the cost of people's lives. If you lost a loved one, that's too bad because we don't want to offend Trump now. Can't do that. Even the doctors came out afterwards in a uh, documentary after the, mm -hmm. they, they all had to sign a non-disclosure agreement. Anyone who worked for Trump had to sign a non-disclosure agreement. Well, the non-disclosure agreement is over with. Everyone come on out and say what this asshole did. It was just pretty evident. Um, but the doctors came out and they said what they had to do. Mm -hmm. They had to change the figures. They had to change the mandates. They had to change everything. Otherwise, it offended him. The one woman, uh, Dr. Burke, she sat there when he brought up drinking bleach or sanitizer, and she knew nothing about it. And when she got out of there and she tried to tell people not to do it, he got pissed at her, and she was shunned. Hmm. But that Lysol actually had to come out with a disclaimer for two weeks telling people and even though they came out with a disclaimer people did drink it they actually did some people died from it they actually believed this son of a bitch someone tell you to drink the president tells you to drink bleach to beat covid and they did it it's definitely very irresponsible um that's ridiculous that's that's, that's, that's my that's one of the things that it, it's I think it's something wrong with the world if 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 he's reelected. Um, the the problem that I have is that no one sees anything wrong with what he's done. What he says, um, I, I have to I have to admit, when he ran, I honestly thought it would have been a, a great idea because I felt like a non politician running for president might be good for the United States of America. Now I thought that at one time with Lee Iacocca. Mm -hmm. Because Lee Iacocca, he was he was very good. Mm -hmm. That so, I, I agree with you. It it could happen, mm -hmm. but it has to be the right person, and he was right. not the right, right person. And his knowledge, and and the amazing thing is, is his knowledge of anything is skewed at best. Mm -hmm. He says he knows more than this person, and more than this. They got a whole montage. Of he knows more than the senators, he knows more than the military, he knows more than uh, the financiers, he knows more than the tax people. He know How is it he knows more than the tax people? Yeah. He must have read that in Jughead or something. You know, one of the things that amazed me, though, he said he knew more than in the military. And all these military people bandied around to him because he's, I guess because he was a conservative, maybe. Mm -hmm. These were people that fought in Vietnam. These were the same, some of the insurrectionists. Are they aware that he didn't go to Vietnam? I don't think they care. I, I think as long as he pushes that, uh, that, that, that agenda or that, um, I don't know how to put this. I, I don't think it matters to them, basically, because what he, what he preaches, what he talks about, is what they're all about. He they're, disrespected John McCain, mm -hmm. saying he was not a hero. It doesn't matter. It does not matter. It does not matter. He, in their eyes, he can do no wrong. And everything that he does so is they, justifiable. So they went to, uh, while they were fighting Vietnamese, mm -hmm. Koreans, uh, Afghanis, mm -hmm. Taliban, he was fighting gonorrhea. That's not a joke. Uh, no, I'm just saying that. That's true. That's and, and, and what's really amazing <laughs> to me is how uh, he was pro-life, and yet he, had, he was affiliated with abortions. Mm -hmm. But these women will not come out. It's untraceable, unless they, they do come out and mm -hmm. accuse him. Uh, there's a good chance he has some, some kids out there that they will never find out about. But yet, he was the same one that made sure that there were sem was it 17 executions before he got out of office. Mm -hmm. How can you be pro-life here and execute here? Mm -hmm. How can you tell the military, just shoot them during the Black Lives Matter protest? Mm -hmm. 
Just shoot them. But you're pro-life. How can you criticize people on the street when he was in Los Angeles? He was going to Los Angeles and San Francisco to get campaign donations, mm -hmm. 15 million each, mm. and yet complained about the bums on the street because they were bringing down property values. And you're the president? He's also, how can he's a, you? He's also a businessman. You know, that's how businessmen think. Well, you know, he's uh, he's a, I, I think he's a businessman first. And, uh, no, uh, he's and, not uh, a businessman and, uh, because the man, well, <laughs> his, his business practices, he's well, had more businesses go out. Yeah, but it doesn't take take away the fact that he's a, a businessman per se. Um, and that's, that's how they think. Well, yeah. as far as his business, he said that his father gave him a million dollars and he grew it from here. Mm -hmm. Well, the truth of the matter is, which did come out, he lost enormous amounts of money. And then he swindled his some of his family to get more of the, the inheritance that his father left. His father bailed him out so many times. He took tax deductions, uh, his Taj Mahal in uh, uh, Atlantic City was going under. Mm -hmm. He ran it right into the ground. The investors had to keep propping it up so they could sell it so they could get at least some of their money back rather than pennies on the dollar. Okay. And that's when he was taking the tax deductions off of that. It wasn't his money. He ran the USFL into the ground and destroyed it because the NFL did not want him to own the team. Hmm. That is documented. He has had more businesses go out. And he's gone into so many bankruptcies. Mm -hmm. But see, he doesn't talk about that because Trump, it, okay, this is a person. This is somebody who lives by hate. He, he never does anything wrong. You ever hear him do anything wrong? No. Never did anything wrong. It's always somebody else. Have you noticed how many people were the greatest person and we are so lucky to have him he's dumber than a bag of rocks the show that he had was all staged oh the apprentice it was bullshit there was no more reality in that than, than what he's doing now this is a man you want the crux of it this is a man that is going to destroy democracy if he wins, we will become an autocracy where the three branches of government are executive, legislative, and judicial. We'll change to executive, judicial, and legislative. The judicial, which he has said and did do with the legislature, packed the courts. What he cannot understand, which has come out now, he is so angry at Kavanaugh because Kavanaugh wasn't, didn't do what he was told. Well, if your judicial does what one dictator wants, then you don't have a ju judiciary. You have a kangaroo court. Because just because he made them a judge does not mean that they owe him. They are to interpret the law. They are to hear the facts and apply it to the law, not Oh, oh, this is Trump? Oh, we'll t overturn the election because he, you know, he put me here. I, God damn, I, I, got to, I owe him. He lost 62 court cases. 62. He won one minor one. Mm -hmm. Well, could this, not to be a conspiracy theorist, but could this be all part of the plan? You know, you look at the, these new voting laws in certain areas. Yes, yes. Yeah. And that's why... I think a lot of these things are happening. Mm -hmm. Plus, here's another thing. He has militias, and like you say, and you're, you're right about this, these militias are for him. Mm -hmm. These militias, he is their leader, and they say that. It's not like, well, we think they're, you know, they're affiliated with him. No, they are affiliated with him. I watched him when I was in Frankenmuth one day. Mm -hmm. They were in Freeland for a Trump rally on Thursday. That weekend, last summer, I was coming through and the Trump people had moved into Frankenmuth. Now, Frankenmuth had their, their version of uh, uh, the Dream Cruise. Mm -hmm. 
and they had all these cars. The Trump people took it over. There were flags of Trump dressed as Rambo. Uh, there were, they were shooting off guns. They took over the entire town. They were on both sides of the streets. They had flags that said, kill Democrats. They were shooting their guns. It, it was maybe one-tenth of what you saw on January 6th. And I got caught in the middle of it. And you know, if you've been to Franklin, yeah, you Franklin have to go down. You yeah. have to go down the street. You can't just veer off right, somewhere. Right, exactly. You you became a part of it because I, we didn't know. Right. Not not to I don't know how much time we have left, but I know we're supposed to be talking about the insurrection. Um, maybe next week. Maybe next week. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I, I guess it's, it's safe to assume that you feel that his rhetoric, uh, his speech, or his uh, that he's pretty much the, the reason why the insurrection took place. He, he caused it. By mm -hmm. the way, in the books that have come out, mm -hmm. he was having meetings with Republican congressional leaders, mm -hmm. Louis Gohmert, uh, Jim, Jim Jordan. These are recorded. Mm -hmm. This was something that was planned. This didn't just happen because remember, he announced January 6th was coming. Be there. It's going to be wild. So that wasn't something that just happened if you could announce it mm -hmm. two weeks in advance. Mm -hmm. It is verified that the Proud Boys were in the White House mm -hmm. to talk with him because you have to sign the book. Mm -hmm. He met with these people. He did not denounce them. He tried to get the courts to overthrow the government or the, the uh, election. Mm -hmm. He tried to get the attorney generals of all the states, he called all of them, including Michigan, mm -hmm. and he bypassed Bill Barr on that. And that was when Bill Barr quit. Mm -hmm. And Bill Barr came out and said, there is no fraud. Now, uh, clarification. He said, there's no amount of fraud that would make any difference. Mm -hmm. They did find fraud. The majority of it was fraud on Trump's behalf, not on Biden's, on Trump's behalf. It's so, he was doing all these things that led up to it. On the 5th, he sat down with Mike Pence and told him, you are going to overturn this. And Mike Pence said, I can't, which he couldn't. He didn't, he didn't have the authority to do it. Mm -hmm. Even if he wanted to, he didn't have the authority to do it. So why did he think that he, he was that Mike Pence could because some of the people that were in there it. with him and because mm -hmm. he because he's Trump mm -hmm. after that first uh, uh, and, and it's amazing the first impeachment was legitimate mm -hmm. he was guilty and now that has come out they have a recording of Rudy Giuliani making the deal with the president of Ukraine mm -hmm. it's on tape we can hear it and then Trump talked to him now there is a tape of that phone call Trump gave his synopsis so it, with that synopsis, if, if you listen to the synopsis, you'll find and, and match it with the actual phone call. Only six people knew where that was. It was locked away. Mm -hmm. did, the, did, you do, um, did you hear anything? Like, what did you hear in that conversation? That the deal was to be made that uh, President Trump wants you to discredit uh, Joe Biden and that there is an investigation on Hunter Biden. Now, their basis for it was... Hunter Biden made 50000 a month. Yeah? Mm -hmm. What the hell do you think uh, 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 Jeff Bezos wipes his ass with 50000 <laughs> So what, they made it all up. They were trying to discredit him. And what he did was the money that was allocated for Ukraine mm -hmm. was you'll get it after this is done. Well, then the Congress got involved and said, no, you can't do that. Now, once that money is allocated, you can't hold them hostage. And that's exactly what Trump did. Mm -hmm. The phone call wasn't beautiful. But Mitch McConnell said they had him dead to rights. Even the senators, after it was all over, stated, yeah, I, I, I think he was guilty. Mm -hmm. So you allowed him to get through. That's an autocracy, and that's what you'll have. If he wins again, if you think that was bad, you ain't seen nothing yet. And one thing, one last thing, with an autocracy. In a democracy, you vote, 
the winner is chosen, accept it, and walk away. Okay? Deal with it, and then in four years, deal with it again. Correct? Okay. In an autocracy, they have to hang on to power. Trump already has his militias, and they're everywhere. Same as Hitler's brown shirts, same as Mussolini's black shirts, mm -hmm. same thing as uh, North Korea, same thing as Russia. Remember this, if we go to an autocracy, they have to hold power. People don't grant it to them. Be careful what you vote for. Let me ask you just one question. The next election, Trump wins. Let's say he wins. What is your ideal, idea of America if he wins, like what, what do you see the for, the, for, the, for the next four years with Trump in office, what will America be like in your eyes? Trump right now has said who his enemies are. Mm -hmm. Trump has stated that Hillary Clinton will be put in jail. He's already told you. The laws, he is the law. The uh, DOJ is for the people, not for the president. Mm -hmm. But he made it for himself and used it as a weapon. Mm -hmm. He used the government to go after people. He sidestepped the legislature and the courts. He's already shown you. If he wins again, he'll put it into practice. And you will be one sorry sucker. The world you see pre-2015 will not exist. You might as well start looking at uh, how Russia, uh, Russia, Egypt, North Korea, uh, Philippines. Take a look at what they have. That's what you'll be living with. Well, there you have it, folks. I am Corey Scott. This is Dave Lillis. It's political news and political views. We'll see you not next week, but the following Tuesday. Right? Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, why not? <laughs> <laughs> well, that's our time, folks. Thanks for joining us. Okay.